it's day 23 of my 30 day SQL query challenge. And for today, I'm going to be solving a pretty popular hard level problem from lead code. Now, as you can see, this is the problem statement. The problem ID is 2153. And the name of the problem is the number of passengers in each bus two. Okay. Now, first of all, let us understand this problem statement. So we are given two tables. There is the bus table, buses, and then there are the passengers table. In the buses table, there are three fields. There is a bus ID, there is the arrival time of the bus, and then there is a capacity, number of free seats available in the bus. So you can see that the bus ID is unique. Okay, Each row of this table contains information about the arrival time of a bus at the lead code station and its capacity, the number of empty seats. No two buses will arrive at the same time and all bus capacities will be positive integers. Okay, so this is what is given about the bus table. Then when it comes to passengers, we have two fields. There is a passenger ID and there is a arrival time. Okay, now the passenger ID is unique and each row of this table contains information about the arrival time of a passenger at the lead code station. Okay, now what we need to do is the buses and passengers arrive at lead code station if a bus arrives at a station at a time, let's say T bus and a passenger arrived at a time, let's say T passenger, where T passenger is less than or equal to T bus and the passenger did not catch any bus, the passenger will use that bus. Okay. In addition, each bus has a capacity. If at the moment the bus arrived at the station, there are more passengers waiting than its capacity, then only the capacity passengers will use the bus. Now I'm going to explain you in detail once I have once I show you the data set, but let us read through this. Okay. Write a solution to report the number of users that used each bus. Return the result table ordered by bus ID in ascending order. Okay, now they have given some sample data set. In the first sample data set, we have three buses. So bus ID 1, 2, 3, in, and we have an arrival time, 2, 4, and 7. For the sake of understanding, let us consider this to be 2 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m and the capacity, how many seats are available in each bus, it's present here. Now in the passenger table, you can see that there are five passengers with the ID 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And the time when the passenger arrived is mentioned in the second column here. The output should look something like this, one record for each bus, and it should tell how many passengers actually onboarded that particular bus. So this is basically the problem. We have the information about the bus, we have the information about the passengers, we need to find a way to calculate how many passengers onboarded each of the bus. Now let me just spend a minute to explain you how did we come up with this output. Now you can see that for bus ID 1, the arrival time is 2, let's say 2 p.m. and there was one seat. Now at 2 p.m. if you look at the passengers table, you can see that there is there are two passengers who with the ID 11 and 12 who arrived at 1 p.m. So when the first bus came at 2 p.m., the two passengers with the ID 11 and 12 were already present at the station, right? So these two passengers are available to onboard the bus. But this bus only has a capacity of one seat. That means out of these two passengers, only one passenger can onboard the first bus. Now, when we come to the second bus, the second bus arrived at 4 p.m. Now at 4 p.m., we want to first see how many passengers are available. Now you can see that the last three passengers came after 5 p.m., right? But before 4 p.m., there are only these two passengers, okay? But out of these two, the first passenger has already onboarded the first bus. That means for the second bus, there's only one passenger available. That is this passenger, right? The second one here. And you can see that the capacity of the second bus is there are 10 free seats, but only one available passenger. So that one available passenger onboards the second bus. Now, when it comes to the third bus, the third bus came at 7 p.m. And you can see that at 7 p.m., these three passengers also have arrived at the station. That means at 7 p.m., there are three available passengers. Out of these three available passengers, only two of them can onboard the third bus because only two seats are available, right? And that is exactly what is mentioned. The first bus, the one passenger onboarded it. Second bus, another one more passenger onboarded it. And the third bus, only two passengers onboarded it. So this is basically the problem. Now this data set that you see is a pretty simple data set, but I also have, I am going to share with you five different data sets where there are lot more passengers, lot more buses, and it's going to be a little bit more complex data set. Okay. So you can, whatever solution you come up with, you should be trying it not only with this data set, but also with a lot of other data set, which I'm going to be sharing in my file. Now, as always, as part of this challenge, you will be able to download all of this material, and then you will be able to solve it on your own using any database of your choice. Once you solve it, share your solution in Discord, and then try to help each other or check out others' solutions. 
Now I'll be solving this problem using the PostgreSQL database and once I have the solution I'll try to submit in lead code and we'll see if this solution works not only for this data set but for all the other data sets that lead code generally tests a solution with. Now as you can see I have already created these two tables okay and first and foremost I'll just put it into a new window here and I'll run this. Now even before I do anything my first thing that I will do is I'll try to somehow come up with the data that I need to build my logic. Okay, now I have the bus ID, I have the arrival time, I have the capacity. Okay, then in the passengers table, I have the passenger ID and I have the arrival time. Okay, now what I want to know is when a bus arrives at a station, I want to know how many passengers are available. I don't care who are the passengers. I only care how many passengers are available, right? So from the bus table, I need all these three fields probably. Probably I need the bus ID, I need the capacity, arrival time probably I need it so, so that I could join it with the passengers table, not for any other purpose. But I need the bus ID and capacity to build the logic. And then from the passengers table, I need to know for each bus how many passengers are available, right? So first and foremost, I'm going to do is I'll just join these two tables. So I'm just going to say, uh, from this table buses, I'll call it like B, I'll join it with the passengers table P and how do I join it? Now there are no matching columns where I can easily join. The only column with which I can join is the arrival time. My logic is the passenger, the passenger should arrive before or at least at the same time as the bus arrives, right? That is less than or equal to the B dot arrival time. Right. So this is basically how I'm going to join these two tables. Now, if I just run this, you can see that I'm getting nine records. But for more clarity, let me just sort it based on B dot bus ID so that you understand how many passengers are available for each bus. Now you can see that for the bus one, there are two records. That means two passengers are available. The passenger ID 11 and 12. Okay. For the second bus, again, only two passengers are available, 11 and 12, the same passengers. For the bus three, you can see that all the five passengers are available. Of course, out of these five, some of them have already onboarded the previous bus. That we will calculate later. Okay. But this is basically kind of the first thing that I want. Okay. Now, among these details, I need the bus ID, I need the capacity, and I need the total number of passengers. Okay. Arrival time, I don't really care because I only wanted that to join these two tables. And I also don't care about the passenger ID. I'm only interested in the count, how many passengers are available, right? Now, one way of doing this is probably I could use the count, okay, use it like a window function and fetch the total count, okay, total count of passengers for each bus. Or a faster way would be what I'm going to do now, okay? So I'm just going to say, I'll just copy this, okay? And I'll fetch the fields that I need. So I need the bus ID, okay? I need the capacity and I need the, the total passenger count, right? Now, in order to get the total passenger count, what I'm going to do is, instead of using the count as window function, I can just query the data from the passenger table and try to get it here. So I'm using a select clause inside a select clause. So I'll say select count of one from passengers P and I'll use the same join condition that I used here. Okay, so I'll put that here. And this is going to be my total passengers, okay? Now, if I just run this, I'm getting an error and it is not on, it should be where, and now let me run this. Now you can see that for I have three records, one for each bus, I have their capacity, and now I know the total passengers here. So for the first bus, there were two passengers available. For the second bus, again, two passengers available. For the third bus, all the five passengers are available. Okay, so this is basically what I wanted. But in addition to this, I also want one more thing. And that is, now for this particular data set, you can see that I have the bus ID as one, two, three. But there could be other data sets where the bus ID could be something else. You see here, this is another data set where the bus ID is three, two, six, three, nine, four, et cetera, right? So that means the bus ID is not always going to be a unique row number. It can be anything, right? So that means I need to come up with my own row number. And that is why I'll use the row number window function. So I'll say row number over order by arrival time okay and i'll name it like rl okay so i have fetched the unique row number the bus id capacity and the total passengers now if i run this now i think i have the data that i need based on which i can build my logic okay now first and foremost i'll just clear all of this now the next thing that i need to do is every time there is a bus that comes to the lead code station I need to figure out how many passengers onboarded that bus. So basically, 
for the first bus, you can see capacity is one. So there is only one seat available and there are totally two passengers. So basically, how many passengers can actually on board? You could easily find out, right? So if let's say if the capacity is less than the total passengers, then the capacity is the, basically the number of passengers who can climb or onboard the bus. If the total passengers are less than the capacity, then all the total passengers can onboard the bus, right? So basically I could do a case, case when if capacity is less than total passengers, then capacity is my onboarded number of people or else it is the total passengers who are the onboarded number of people, right? Now I could use a case statement or I could probably use a inbuilt function to find which value among these two columns are the lower, okay? Whatever value is low, I'll take that value. Now I can do that in for the first bus, okay? For the first bus, it would basically be whatever is uh, the minimum value between capacity and total passengers, those many number of people onboarded the bus, that is fine. But when I come to the second bus, okay? How do I do that? Because when I come to the second bus, I cannot just compare the capacity with the total passengers because out of these two total passengers, some of the passenger, in this case, one passenger has already onboarded the previous bus. That means from the total passenger, I need to subtract the total people who have onboarded all the previous buses, right? That means this is a case where I need to use recursion because I need to know what happened in the previous iteration. So from the previous iteration, I need to know how many people onboarded the bus. I need to subtract that value with the total passengers and then compare it with the capacity to, to know how many people can actually onboard the bus. Okay. So with that in mind, what I'll do is I need to use recursion. So I'm just going to say with recursive CTE as, and this is basically going to be my input table. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll just smooth this. Uh, into another CTE here. So I'll just call this like, let's say CTE data as, okay. And here for the recursion, I'm just going to write a query here, okay. Uh, and this will be a comma here. And then my main query is going to be here, select star from CTE, okay. And this is going to be from. Now, how do I come up with my recursive part of the query? Now, you know, in the recursive part, you will have the base query, then union, and then you will have the recursive query, right? So for the base query, the information that I need is I need RN, I need both of this bus ID and capacity, and I need the total passengers, right? And from where am I going to take it? I'm going to take it from the CT data table, okay? Since it is my first iteration, I only need to fetch where the row number is one for the first bus. So I can just tell where Rn equal to one. So this will execute only for the first bus, okay? Then when I come to the second, basically for all the other buses that should get executed in the second query here, in the recursive part of the query, okay? For that, I need to write a query, but I'll just uh, say select from, I need to do something, but for now, I'll just comment it out, okay? I don't need that as of now, we'll build that a little later. But in the first iteration, that is the base query, that is for my first bus, I'm only going to execute where the row number equal to one, okay? Now, if I just execute this, let's see if it is actually working, I'm getting an error and it is because I missed a parenthesis here. And now let's see if it is actually working. Okay, now it is working. I'm getting some information. I'm getting the bus ID and total passengers. But I'm not interested in total passengers. I want to know how many people onboarded the bus. So how do I do that? As I told you, we need to find the minimum value between these two fields, right? So in PostgreSQL, I could use a function called as least, okay? So it will take among these two fields, whichever field is having the least value, that field will be returned, okay? Or the value from that field will be returned. So least of this, and this is going to be my onboarded bus, okay? So this many people onboarded the bus, okay? Now, this is fine for the first record, but when it comes to the second record, that is, let's say if I just run this query, you can see that I have for this record, okay? For the second record, uh, when I'm executing, I need to compare, so the on total people who onboarded the bus, I need to compare capacity and total passengers, but I also need to subtract the people who have onboarded the previous bus. So I want to know how many people in total have onboarded the bus. So here I could basically say total passengers minus onboarded bus, and that I need to compare with capacity, right? But when I'm coming to the third record, I cannot just do five, that is total passengers minus the onboarded bus from the previous iteration. I cannot just do that. I need to take people who onboarded the previous bus as well as all the other previous bus. So that means along with this onboarded bus field, I also need another field, which is basically going to tell me the total onboarded bus. So this onboarded bus is just the people who boarded the bus 
for each bus, right? For when I am processing each bus, how many people onboarded that current bus? But this total onboarded bus will tell me the total people who have onboarded all the previous buses or all the buses until now. Okay. So that is why I need this field as well. But in the first iteration for the first bus, both of this is going to be the same. Now this is fine. Let me just run this and maybe I'll just make this down. And if I run this and you can see that I am getting some data. Okay. And if I just take this, this is basically my actual result that I want. How many people onboarded the bus? Okay. Now this is my base query, first iteration. Now let us come to build the second, uh, the recursive part of the query. That is this one. Okay. Below the union all. Now what I need to do here is first and foremost, I need to fetch the data from the CT that is from the previous iteration. That is how recursion is formed. Right. And I need to join it with the CT data. That is my input table. In this case, whatever I get here is my input table, CT data, right? And let's say I'm going to call it like D and how do I join it? Now I know that CT initially it starts with row number one, right? So if I want in the second iteration, it, it should process the second row. That means the D dot row number should be two. So I should say D dot row number should be equal to CT dot row number plus one, right? So initially in the first iteration, it's one. The second iteration, this will become two. So it will process for the second record that is this one when it comes to the third iteration this rn will be already two because whatever it got result from the second iteration will be passed to the third iteration as ct so rn will be two two plus one is three so the third record will get processed okay in the third iteration so that is how this recursion is going to work now what are the fields i need to fetch first of all i need to fetch all of these fields right but the thing is i should be fetching this field from the ct data table so that i get the data from this second row here. Okay, when, when I'm processing the second record. So here I'm just going to say D dot and I'll just copy this, this one, this one and this one. Okay, so this is fine. I have taken these four fields. What about the onboarded bus? Now I'll just copy the same thing. Okay, I'll just copy this and I'll put it here. The only thing that I need to do is I need to compare. So first of all, I need to take the field from the D table that is CT data. So I'll just put that alias here. The second thing is when I'm processing this second record, I need to subtract the total passengers minus the total people who have onboarded the bus till now. So total people who have onboarded the bus till now is this one, this field, right? And so I'll just do a minus this. Okay. So I'll, yeah, I'll just put it here. Okay, but this total onboard date should come from the previous iteration. The previous iteration data comes from the CTE table. So I'll say minus CTE dot total onboarded bus. Okay, and this is going to be my onboarded bus for the current iteration. And now I also need to find the total onboarded bus, right? Now total onboarded bus will basically be this uh, logic here is going to return me the total people who onboarded the bus in the current record or in the current bus. And then I have the total people who have already onboarded all the previous bus that is here, right? So first of all, I'll just take uh, this one plus, okay, so that is CTE dot total onboarded bus. So for when I, let's say I'm processing the third record, two people have already onboarded. So this will have the value two plus the current bus, how many people onboarded? That is this value again, and this value is all, will also be same because it's basically the same thing. Okay. So onboarded people who have onboarded the bus that I'll get from here and the people who have onboarded all the previous bus that I'll get here. Okay. So if I sum together, this will be the complete total number of people who have onboarded the bus until now. Okay. So that's it. Now I think if I just run this, you can see that I'm actually getting the result that I want. Okay. So in this, I need the bus ID and I need the onboarded bus. So I'll just fetch the fields that I need. That is bus ID and then I need the onboarded bus. So I'll just copy this and I'll name it like passengers CNT. Okay. Because this is the column name that lead code expects. And then they have mentioned that I need to sort the data based on uh, the bus ID. So I'll say bus ID. Okay. Now if I run this, you can see that one, two, three and one, one, two, this is basically the output that I wanted. Okay, so this is basically my solution to this particular problem. I hope you understand this solution. Now, what I'll do is, if you have never used lead code, one of the best things about lead code is that whenever you have a solution, when you put your solution, and I can choose any database, Postgres, SQL Server, MySQL, Oracle, or I can also solve it using Pandas, but let me choose Postgres. The best thing is, first, this solution, when I click run, okay, so let's say if I run it, it's going to only test my solution with this, input data, whatever was given here. Okay. And it is telling 
accepted and it is taking 490 milliseconds. Okay. But then I have to do submit. When I do submit, lead code already has, let's say, maybe 10, 15 different test cases, different data sets. Against it also, it will try to check this data, this solution. If this solution works with all the different data, then only this solution is accepted. So now if I just click submit, we'll just wait. You can see that my solution is accepted and it tells my solution is 75% faster than all the other solutions. In fact, I can actually modify this query to make it even faster. Okay, and that is what I'll do now. So what I'll do is I have this city data outside here, right? I can just put it inside the recursion itself. Okay, so how I can do that is I will just open the parenthesis here. Okay, and I'll remove that and okay. And then here I'm just going to put my city okay, and I'll move this query to the right. I'll remove the comma here and this one I'll just call with okay now what am I basically doing is if I just show you uh, I'll do this okay now what am I basically doing is this input data that I needed CT data this I put it inside a with clause okay and this is my query and then after that I wrote my whole recursive part of the query and this whole thing I have put it inside the recursion city okay and now if I run it you can see that I'm still getting the output and this is slightly faster okay so if I just put this solution here if you remember it took 490 milliseconds let's see how much this takes now okay so now let me run this now you see that it's taking 236 milliseconds. It's almost half less. It's basically taking less than half the time. Okay, just with this one change. And now if I just submit this solution, let's see what happens. Now you can see that I think this is not very accurate because the same solution has taken me around 400 milliseconds previously. Okay, so I think something to do with some cache and everything. But let's say I will just submit it again. Okay, let's see if the time improves. Okay, probably it will. Okay, let's see. Now you can see that it's taking 441 milliseconds and this is 100% faster than all the others. So this is basically one of the fastest solutions for this particular problem. Okay. I hope you like this problem. Now, just for the sake of some other people who do not use Postgres, but use SQL Server, I'm going to give you this solution using SQL Server. So what I'll do is I'll go into my Azure Data Studio. I have already created the table. Now in um, SQL Server database, First of all, we don't need to use the recursive CT. Okay. And the second thing, I cannot use a with clause inside a with clause. It's going to throw me an error. Okay. So it's not allowed in SQL Server. So rather what I'll do is here, I'll just put this with clause outside. Okay. So I will just copy this and I will just do this. So then here, I'm just going to put a comma. I'll put that second CTE. Okay. And yeah. So let me just clean it a little so i'll just put this in the same line so this is my recursive part of the query and this is my input table but this needs to come before the recursion so what i'll do is i'll just move this here and i'll say cte as okay and this thing I'll just cut it and then this thing i'll put it here okay and comma here i'll remove the comma so I'm just rearranging the query, nothing, I have not changed the logic, at least now, okay. I just put that CT data in as the first CT and then I put the recursion as a second CT. Now if I run, it will still throw me error because this least uh, function is not supported in SQL Server. So what I can do is instead of using least, I can perform the same thing using case. So case when, let's say I'll just copy this, case when capacity is less than total passengers, then I say capacity else I say total passengers and and this is going to be my onboarded bus okay and let me just comment out this and the same thing I will do for total onboarded bus right and this one okay and I'll just I'll just remove this I don't need this okay and the same case statement I need to use here so in this also I will just copy the same case okay just to save time I'll put it here and now I need to compare between these fields. So D dot capacity with this whole field, right? So for that, I'll just put this um, inside the parenthesis and then here I will just tell, okay, maybe I'll just move this here case when 
D capacity is less than the total remaining passengers then D capacity else this whole thing okay and I'll say end and this is going to be my total onboarded uh, bus okay so I think that's uh, okay this is my uh, onboarded bus right so this is my onboarded bus right so this one and this one right okay so I can remove this particular uh, this particular thing and here I can again copy the same case statement and I can put it I can replace this least function okay so okay just okay and then I think that's all so now if I just run this now you can see that I am getting the output now what I'll do is I'll just copy this whole thing and I'll put it in lead code so I'll choose the database as SQL server and I'll put it here and now let me run it and see if it's actually working so it's taking 744 milliseconds I'll do a submit and you can see that it is accepted but it has taken 1741 millisecond but it's still pretty fast right so this is basically my solution to this particular problem I hope you like this problem if you did uh, make sure to leave a feedback in the comments below let me know if you have any other hard problems in lead code which you want me to solve I'll definitely consider that and thank you so much for watching I'll see you again tomorrow with another interesting problem bye